when we look at stars of different temperatures, and you can see here I've got a table that I've actually cut, um, just cut down, and I've just given you on one side, it's not labelled, sorry, because I cut bits off it. Um, to the far left, you've got a temperature range. So the top temperatures there are like 28,000 to 50,000 Kelvin. So that's degree, like Kelvin, like degrees above absolute zero. So that's a really hot object, and we've got all the way down to like 2,000 to 3,500 Kelvin. When we look at the like the stars of those temperatures, we'll notice that their spectra all look different. So regardless of what they're composed of, we'll see particular um, lines. So basically, there's a lot of homogeneity in the in the universe. So there's lots of like basically our star is made up of the same stuff as other stars are made of. Um, the the chemistry and the physics of the universe is fairly constant. It's very constant. Um, so what we're seeing here is when we look at a really hot star, we're getting a particular spectrum, and then when we look at a cooler star, we're getting a different spectrum. And the reason for that is when, when we look at the hot star, for example, you'll see that if you compared that to the known emission spectra from, um, from elements and from compounds and from molecules on Earth, you would see that those things line up with ionized helium. So in order to have ionized helium, a star has to be incredibly hot. And we're talking about ionized helium in the, in the photosphere, so in the atmosphere of the star. So it's got to be incredibly hot in the atmosphere of the star to get that happening. So you'll only get that in really, really hot stars. If you look down the bottom with your very cool star, you've actually got lines there that correspond to like whole compounds, whole molecules like, for example, titanium oxide. Now, titanium oxide, if you heat that up even further, it's basically going to ping apart. Um, but also, it's you're not going to get those spectrum spectral lines. So at those low temperatures, those molecules are stable enough that you'll actually get their spectral lines. So we can use spectra as well as like looking just at the peak wavelengths. We can also look at the absorption lines on um, a star's spectra. And we can help. That can help us to work out what temperature is. It is. It can also help us to work out other characteristics we can look at now.